Argentinians and Chile. Chile. Let's let everybody in, George. All right, Tony. Let's do it. Good morning, guys. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, for being at, here one more time, Title Tuesday. We're going to start at 105, like always, at 105. Felicia, thank you. You're going to be asking the questions. You were just choose. Okay. <laughs> And I redid all my slides, it's all fancy for me to share the screen. I think it'll be helpful today. Rather than looking at my beautiful face all the time, I think the screen will be more, more of interest to the listeners. You are a co-host, so you can start sharing whenever you're ready. We're gonna start now. Four more minutes, guys, four minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, people piling in. Let's see some familiar faces. So it seems like most of the people on this call are from LA County area. Is that pretty much the case? Yeah, that's fair to say. Yeah, good. I am. So I've been, I do business now kind of almost nationally. I have a referral going on in New York. I just have one in Connecticut, one in San Diego. So I started to learn more about other regions, but LA is my home. So I know this area pretty well. And I'm sure I know some of these agents on the call too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to start in two more minutes. Two more minutes to start. Thank you for being here at Title Tuesday. We used to have Taco Tuesday. Now we have Title Tuesday. Can I say I like Taco Tuesday better? Would that be, would that be rude? Um, Bill, I have to say I like, if you see my post of today, I love Taco Tuesday. Yeah. I wish I can do Taco Wednesday, Taco Thursday, Taco Friday, Taco. Saturday, Sunday. Well, if you do that, you look like me, or be careful. Oh, I already look fat. <laughs> I am fat. All right, guys, one more minute. One more minute to start. Hadi, thank you for being here. So if you were guessing, when do you think we'd be having Taco Tuesdays and sales meetings like we used to, what would, 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 would your guess be today? Uh, well, I have some of the title reps from Pacific Coast title here. They're going to be all excited because we have our first live meeting in two weeks. Nice. So we're going to go try to go back to normal. I mean, little by little. Um, but we need to go back to to try to be normal again. So uh, if I guess a few more months, 
because we have we have real bad memories. We don't remember. Who remembers the subprime? Nobody, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Tony, please star. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Anthony Zamora, Pacific Coast Title. As <laughs> always, I'm going to start off with some quick ground rules. All questions are to be entered into the chat. Questions will be asked at the end of the presentation. I should say, I'm sorry. Questions will be asked during this presentation throughout the presentation. Uh, please make sure your device is muted. If your question is not asked or answered, you will be given the speaker's contact info so you can contact them directly. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our PCT reps from LA, the Inland Empire, Oxnard, Ventura, Orange, and San Diego for inviting your clients. Also, please enter your contact info into the chat so we can send you a copy of this recorded presentation via email. Please enter your name, email, phone number, and the PCT rep in which you work with. Also next week, please stay tuned for our Title Tuesday where we will have uh, Phil Atwan with the 1031 Exchange. And without further ado, I'd like to present our guest speaker for today, Mr. Bill Gross. Thank you, Bill, it's all yours. Thanks, Ray, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for having me back. I appreciate uh, Pacific Coast Title and Title Tuesday. And uh, like all of us longing for Taco Tuesday, but uh, sounds like it's gonna happen sooner rather than later. So today we're gonna to talk about, last week we talked about 11 ways to do a real estate sale in probate real estate. And presumably most people on this call are, were, were and or are real estate agents or related uh, to that business. But I think one of the unique opportunities of probate is those additional streams of income that I think you can use and I've used to uh, make additional income, but also generate money to use for marketing. And so I want to talk to you about 11 different ways you can make money in probate real estate. And I would recommend for each of you to look for one or two. If you're going to work in real estate, this is a way to make some extra money to finance your way into the probate business. So today we're talking about 11 ways to make money in probate real estate. Now, I will say it's not a quick fix. Uh, you have to work hard. You have to be consistent. You have to do follow up and you have to learn and improve. I've been in this business since 1986. That's always been the case. There have been a few periods of time you can make money some get rich quick thing, but that's not the norm. We're not headed in that kind of market, I don't think today at all. And so I just wanna say myself, I'm Bill Gross. I've been in real estate since 1986, uh, almost all in Los Angeles County. I've been in mortgage and real estate. I've been in sales, management, executive and owner during that time. I've been 100% focused on probate the last two and a half years. I relaunched my business. I came out of management and recruiting really with no personal production at 60 years old and start over again and focus on probate full-time, gener lead generating three hours a day of probate real estate. Um, I've taken a bunch of certifications. I said them all, that's not quite true, but uh, Mike Torres is a good certification. Paul Horns, CAR, I've taken that, alltheleads.com, uh, uh, Kevin Sales, uh, Probate Sales 101. So a lot of good probate training. I've taken a bunch of them. I continue to, uh, I do in-depth research on the topic, watching videos and YouTubes. And I want to say that I really learned the most when uh, pre-COVID, I went to the LA County Courthouse. I was lucky in that Los Angeles is the largest probate court in America. Um, we consolidate all the probate courts into one location in downtown LA at Stanley Mosque about uh, four years ago. And I would go to court every day and watch the court sales. And I can say that I've seen more court confirmation sales in Los Angeles County in the last two years than any agent, attorney, or even judge. I can say it because I used to go two or three a day in different courtrooms. Most judges at most might see one a week. So that's where my experience comes from. And I will share with you uh, how I think I can help you. But before we start, like any other sales, you have to apply the fundamentals. So what are they? First is your mindset. Anything in real estate is going to require you to have a good mindset. The shortcut in real estate is hard work. That's the shortcut. Get ready for it. There's no, anybody tells you that's not the case is not telling you the truth. Uh, Zig Ziglar has a great story. You might want to uh, search this on YouTube. Uh, search Zig Ziglar, water pump. An uh, amazing uh, story he tells about uh, how water pumping is like sales. I think uh, Zig was my first coach. Uh, I learned with him for a week straight in his uh, office in uh, Dallas, Texas. But again, it's the hard work consistently over time that will get you to success. There's only two things that generate business, time and or money. I'm not selling anything. I'm not selling you coaching. I'm not selling you data. I'm just offering my professional support, but you have to invest time in the work and money, probably in data or services 
to help you with business. Um, okay, I'm looking at the chat. You're welcome to ask questions as we go along. I see contact info, but I don't see any questions. So if you have questions, you can raise your hand and or put in the chat box at any time. Real estate is a contact business. The person who talks to the most people generally wins, whether they're a realtor. This is true for title reps, isn't it? I mean, the title rep that talks to most realtors gets the most orders. Isn't that how it works? Right? I remember I used to work in San Gabriel Valley and Diamond Bar. And then for about 10 years, I moved to West LA. I got hired back as a manager in uh, Walnut. And the same best title reps were still doing the most business in the offices. Why? Because they came around every day or week or whatever their program was consistently over time. So real estate is a contact business. And that's true what we're going to talk about today. And it's a numbers game. <clears throat> One more sales, talk to more people more consistently over time. And the last thing I'd say in probate is your come from. How can I help you? Zig Ziglar used to say you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And this is not, no, not true anywhere there in probate real estate. How you help other people will determine your altitude. You want to be the solution. Too many realtors try to hide behind voicemail and my staff and my assistants. You want to be looking for problems because we as realtors get paid to solve people's problems. I would say title reps aren't title reps. They're title problem solvers. If they help their real estate clients solve title problems or get more real estate, they get the title orders. Isn't that how it works for title reps? Yeah, so we need problem solvers in our business. So the problem, title is the problem, probate is the solution or probate services is the solution. So you want to use that as your, as your way through. Um, okay, and then what does that look like? So sometimes it, people don't raise their hand and say, I need a probate listing. The problem looks like grandma or grandpa left me a property or my siblings and I are fighting over mom and dad's property or we're supposed to be in a trust, but it's not. Or we start a probate and got stuck. All those are what probates look like when you talk to a customer. The customer who, who doesn't need your help doesn't need you to list the property. And so this is what we're looking for. We're looking for these problems to solve through probate services. Any questions on that before we go any further? This is what probate looks like. No? No, I don't see no questions. Okay. You know, I might just call, I just might look at name of the list and call you out. I might do that. Don't dare me. Okay. So these are the deals, the solution. Grandma and grandpa left me the property, help them through a probate. Maybe lend them money for the attorney. My siblings and I are fighting over the property. The solution might be get an attorney, help them with a fight, get a probate litigation specialist. Property supposed to be in a trust. Get an attorney to put it back in a trust. It's called a Hegstead petition. There's a special process. Sometimes people create a trust and forget to deed the property in the trust. Or they have it in the trust, they pull it out to refinance, but get to put it back. So there's a particular process called the Hegstead to put it back in the trust. Number four, we start a probate got stuck, help them with the process, help them find the right attorney. What I find is that 95% of cases in LA County are by attorneys who've done one probate in a year or less. Let me do it, say it again. 95% of probate cases in LA County, that's where I'm specialized, the attorney's done one probate or less. How can you be good at anything when you want a year? And so people will run to an attorney they like and trust who did their will or like and trust who helped them in a traffic accident or a DUI or their business. He knows nothing about probate. That's like going to a realtor to manage a property who knows nothing about property management. Very specialized different set of skills. And so you can learn all the possibilities or call me the scenario. I can help you research the situation, find documents, create a game plan, and then help get funds for an attorney or expenses or fix up or whatever. So I'm fine either way. I'm glad to help teach you today. But if you get in a situation you're stuck, I often work with the agents. Sometimes I'll help you unpack the problem or tell her up so call me. I'll help you unpack the problem. Sometimes I'll say to you, you need somebody to help you on this one. It's up to you. Okay, so how do we make money in real estate? Well, obviously, if you're a salesperson, you make money listing and selling houses. If you're a title representative, you make money getting title orders. But there's another way we can make money in probate. And what I'd recommend is find ways to make money through these other services and use that money for your marketing and business. So what do I mean? So number one, 
invest, buy and hold property. You know, investors always want to see properties in the rough market. If you're out lead generating in probate, you're going to see properties that somebody has to sell that's off market. And so you should have a strategy in place. Of course, if you're in real estate, you should have a strategy in place for real estate investing. But in particular, you can just ask the client up front, you know, I'm an investor. If you like, I can make an offer on the property for you. Analyze it as an investor. If you as an investor don't like it because you don't like the product type or location, whatever, analyze as an investor, then offer to other investors to buy. But look at it as an investor. Uh, and there's, yeah, there's a, obviously there's ethical lines and we want to be at the highest level of that. But I find deals because I'm out talking to people every day about property that investors in turn, I give to them and I get paid for. So take a look at being an investor and buying and hold property. Number two, flip property. Now, oftentimes agents have a LLC or a partner and they can make a cash offer on the spot on a property. Some of us have companies where we have I buyers built into them. I'm at EXP, we have it built into our company. Uh, other companies have the same process or similar. So I can meet with a, a homeowner and say, look, we have a couple options. I can list it for you, but I can give you a cash offer today for X. And I literally took a property about two weeks ago where the customer just said, can I just get a cash offer for it? Yeah. And we gave him a cash offer, 320, $10,000 cash. I found an investor, flipped it, made really good money. So if you're working at probate, you're going to find flip opportunities. Why not participate as an agent? I mean, as an investor. Now, if you say, well, Bill, I don't have any money. That's not a problem. If you find a deal with money, there is, I'm sorry. If you find a deal with profit, there's money for that deal. There's money for the down payment or the EMD. There's money for the lending. Easy. Mike, the deal I just did, the guy who found the deal had no money. We put up the $10,000 EMD. I arrange, I'm part of owner of a transaction finance company. We put the money up, uh, flipped it to the next investor and they bought it from him. So learn how to flip the property and consider that as another way to make money in your business. Number three, do construction. Now I'll be honest with you. I own a toolbox just to show to people when they come in to help me at my house. I can't do anything around the house. I can't, I don't put nails in the wall. I'm, I'm, I'm a spoiled prince. But that said, I know people on this call have worked in construction. You can look at a job. You've done construction in your own house. You've done remodeling in your home several times. I know a number of real estate agents slash contractors who make as much money prospecting probates doing the construction work to generate business. How does that work? Sometimes the heir or future heir wouldn't improve the property to sell it at full retail price. And that could mean fixing up, fixing the roof, fixing windows, uh, painting, carpeting, like any other fix and flipper. And so you can do both. You can offer that opportunity to the appropriate seller when it's appropriate, doing construction. I have a guy on my team, Paul Krauss, he's in the South Bay. And he does more construction work than he does as a real estate agent, but he uses the lead gen to generate the construction work. And he's a buy and hold investor as well. So consider if you have those skills, you have those background, you have that team, consider using your construction uh, as another business connected with your probate. I'm not talking about two separate businesses. I'm talking about putting them together. You also can market the same people for what I call two different angles or two bites of the apple. Meaning just like a construction company markets to homes that are uh, distressed, and as a realtor, if you have two different brands, two different postcards, two different callers calling on it, you get two chances, but at the same date, you've only paid for once. So I would consider construction as another one that a number of you that call probably have that experience and would, would be glad to do. Number four is wholesale. Now, wholesaling probate, you can only do that if it doesn't need code confirmation, but that's like 95% of the sales. And so what you want to do when you find somebody who has a property to sell, and oftentimes, they inherit a property, but they own other property as well. That's not the probate. So all of us as real estate salespeople should learn how to wholesale property when it serves the customer's need and a chance for us to make money as well. 
I'm not saying be a predatory wholesaler. I'm saying there are customers I've done deals for who are glad to get cash in 10 days. They didn't want to be bothered with the stress of the escrow, the inspections, the, the negotiations, the renegotiations. If you can make a cash offer tied up and resell it right away, there are plenty of people who'd be happy with that experience. So consider doing that as part of your real estate practice. I've added that consistently over the last two and a half years. I'm now making good money as a wholesaler in addition to being a real estate agent. Number five, lend to the state. So one of the challenges is that an heir, an, an estate uh, isn't gonna last long, right? Somebody passed, they file probate paperwork and all of a sudden now there's an estate. But as soon as they sell the property and unwind all the paperwork, the state goes away. So there's no relationship with the bank. Sometimes the heir doesn't want to use their personal credit. Sometimes they can't use a personal credit for legal reasons. Sometimes they don't qualify. But if an estate owns a property for a million dollars and they have a reverse mortgage with a two or $300,000 balance that's gonna foreclose, could that be a good real estate loan, right? If the estate has the authority and can take a loan out for those of you with money to lend, or those you have customers with money to lend, there's opportunities that you can create loans and either lend money out of your own pocket or arrange loans and get a fee brokering of the loan to the estate or just doing it as a service. Let me just back up a little bit. All of these I'm showing you, I actually have done as a service to my clients. And over time, I've added them into my business as a way to make money. Why should I arrange for another mortgage broker to get paid? It was my client. I did all the work. Once I learned how to serve the client, I can afford to get paid. So number five is lending to the estate. Any questions so far? I don't see anything in the chat box, but you guys are welcome to jump in anytime. Any questions at all? No? Is this helpful? Are we on, on track here with something? Do you guys make some money with some of these ideas? Yeah? You're doing great. Okay, good. Well, I'm having fun. Okay, so number five is lending to the estate. Number six, advance to the estate. Now, this is a different business. There's a whole world of industry, the whole industry uh, called um, probate advance, inheritance advance, heir advance. What does that mean? So uh, there's, a, there's a probate going to happen, and there might be one or several heirs who, who are going to get some money. And there's a company who will look at that estate They'll see who, what the status is, who's the attorney, who's the realtor, are they gonna sell the house? And let's say an heir is gonna get $100,000, you might advance the year 10 or $20,000. Now it's like a payday loan, it's expensive money. You don't want this unless you need it. But sometimes an heir can be advanced money to keep a property out of foreclosure, could be advanced money to get the right attorney to avoid litigation problems. So there's a business, and I own one, where we advance money to estates and pay commission back to people who bring us the business. And I've done that because originally I went to go to these companies and just like a lot of mortgage lenders, don't want anybody in particular, I'd take them to the lender, the lender would decline them and not even tell me. Well, what does that do to my deal? It would kill my deal as a real estate agent. And the same true with some of these advanced companies where I would, they'd say, oh, bring us your business bill, we'll take care of your customer. And then my customer called me pissed saying, oh, they declined me after saying that. They told me I was gonna get the money. They sent me paperwork, they this and that. And then they declined me on day 10. I couldn't afford it had to happen. So what I started to do was pre-vet the deal myself and shop it to the advanced companies to give my clients better service. And it got to a point where I just did enough and do it on my own today. Typically people will borrow 10, 20, $30,000. And usually our referral fee is about a quarter percent of the money lent. So you can get, you know, 1% of 10,000 is a hundred bucks. You can, you know, depending on how much they borrow, a couple hundred dollars. But the most important thing is that's money your client uses to go to hire the right attorney to avoid getting into a lawsuit. Or maybe they have to borrow more to avoid a property going to foreclosure. I uh, got a comment from Alma. How to generate leads would be my main question is to get the leads via Google ads, Facebook ads, or do we contact attorneys? So uh, this is, I'm sorry, I think it's Alina. So Alina, great question. And what I would say is, um, 
you can get probate leads in LA County from many different companies that sell them to you. I don't sell them. But if you text me at good stuff, you just write the words good stuff, nothing else. And you text it to me at 213-460-2577. And I'll type in the chat box. Just to type just the words good stuff to 213-460-2577. I'll, I'll send you back a list of different data sources. One of my use will give you a discount of like 20 to 30% plus a free book. So that's one option. Um, some people use Google ads, some use Facebook ads to generate probate leads, but most generally, the most effective way to get started is to call the petitioners directly. Also, I would say this is a different topic, but a, just a short version. If you're already in business and have a client database, go through your database and find out, A, who's an attorney that you have already, or B, who's the attorney that your clients already work with. Talk to those attorneys. Okay, I wouldn't cold call attorneys, but I would definitely reach out to attorneys that are um, related to your current customers. Okay, number six is um, uh, advanced to estates. Number seven, buy heirs interest in the estate. Now, this is a little more complicated. This is down the road when you've done a few. But I have clients who will go to somebody and say, oh, grandma left you the house. The house is worth, I don't know, $500,000 but you've got to file probate, get approved, put it up for sale. You'll get paid maybe on average a year and a half, two years. The house worth 500, we'll give you 250 for it today. We'll give you 10,000 cash right now and 20,000 a month. Or we'll pay, you know, there's different ways to do it. But you can buy their interest in that property and now you own the property or control the property. So buying the heirs, it should be the posture there, buy the heirs interest in the state is another business model that I have clients who've used this as a way to take over and step into the um, uh, uh, probate and finish it up. And sometimes it doesn't need probate. They figure out how to solve it without a probate. So you buy their interest in the state. Number eight, real estate services. Now, obviously, if you're a real estate agent, you're looking for more business. So I put a list down here of a couple of things, property management. Sometimes people want to keep the property and rent it out. So you should either have a property management department or have a friend who owns a company or a client that's a property manager you can refer the business to. Loans, like I said, lending money to the estate, lending money to the heirs, in general mortgages. There are people who, he is the executor, separate from the estate, he wants to borrow $300,000 to buy the house from the estate. So you want to have a connection, either a mortgage broker you work with or be a mortgage broker and get paid. Buying other properties. So oftentimes you'll find people who are in a probate and they're coming into $500,000, a million dollars. What should they do with it? Now, if you guys are real estate agents, what should somebody do with it? A lot of extra money they come into right now. Where could they invest it that might give them a good long-term appreciation, tax benefits, and maybe cash flow? Anybody want to throw it out an idea? Where should you invest money? I'm waiting for the chat box. Where should somebody who's, who stumbles into a half million dollars, what might they consider doing with the money that can give them a good return for their investment? Anybody? Keep it secure, you know? Anybody want to suggest? You guys are real estate agents. Anybody have any suggestions? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> no. Let me give you a hint. Most of you are real estate agents. Where should people think about investing the money they inherit from a probate? Anybody? Rental properties. Rental properties. Commercial properties. Commercial properties. Flipping properties as an investor. Lending money to your clients. People love talking about real estate. People love investing in real estate. It's still the fastest road to wealth in the long run for people. So we want to make sure we talk to probate, what do you do with the money? Make sure we line ourselves up for that. And also future sales. Somebody might just want to buy a bigger house. Anybody here, if somebody wanted to buy, if somebody's in probate and wanted to buy a bigger house, anybody here able to sell somebody a bigger house in Downey or Covina or Long Beach? Anybody here can help with that? Just curious. No? They have to sell their house first in Whittier. Anyone want to list that house? Right? That's what we do. 
So let's make sure we integrate our probate leads into our real estate business. It's just crazy to me. I see agents miss that opportunity all the time. Number nine, legal services. Document preparation, paralegal, and legal services. So one thing I've done is I found a company that does doc prep for my clients. They offer what they call a white label version that is a, a way that I can make a little bit of money by getting clients to do what they should do anyhow, which is use a legal service instead of um, going to attorney. I would say that, I know attorneys are gonna hate this. I would say that at least three quarters of the petitions that I meet would be better served. I'll go higher, I'll go 90%. Would be better served with a probate document prep service than they would with an attorney. You know, if you have a million dollar house in Whittier, Long Beach, not, not, it's not a fancy house, with a $700,000 mortgage on it, a, a, an attorney will tell you the statutory fees are $23,000. Doesn't include the, the costs. Doesn't mean you have to pay that amount, but customers get talked into that all the time. You can use a document service and get done for $1,500. And in my experience, 90% of the time, they'll get better service that way. So look into document prep. If you have a client who does paralegal work and knows probate business, can you refer it to a client? Can you charge some money for that? And legal services. So again, this is a way, this additional business. I'm not suggesting any of you do all 10 of these. I'm hoping one of these triggers in you, wow, I know document prep. I know paralegal services. I used to be a paralegal then you should be in this business, in my opinion. Number 10, financial services. Somebody who just inherited money and sells a house that has an extra 500,000 or a million dollars needs help. They need advice. They need tax advice. They need taxes prepared on the estate as well as themselves with new money they're buying and selling property. And so I know plenty of realtors who also do financial advice, also do consulting on investments also do tax preparation. And if you're gonna learn probate, then learn these specialties. It's just funny to me, I talk to people all the time. I, I talk to a guy who's an attorney during workman's comp cases, and he's a realtor once again to probate. And I said, well, if you're an attorney, why not do an attorney probate and real estate probate, and then work on the two together? And you would have thought that I helped him discover fire, the idea, that he would market in one, one industry in two angles and use his expertise to be better at both rather than two separate businesses. I know plenty of realtors who do tax prep. It's very common, particularly in the Latin, Latin culture, very common to have notary publics, tax returns, and realtors all put together. Why not specialize in probate and offer probate-related tax services, probate-related financial advice, probate-related tax advice? and use that to generate real estate leads for yourself as well. So I'm looking for those synergies. And I think as I look at businesses today, you know, I've been in this real estate industry for 36 years. It used to be you just had to do loans well or had to do real estate well to make a living. The competition is way more fierce than it would ever, than it's ever been. And we have to be smarter as practitioners and look for the opportunities that are there for us. One, I believe for us as human beings, not as Google or Amazon, but since we're all human on this call, is the synergies where one plus one equals three. And, I, and this is another example, financial services, but the other ones I mentioned, wholesaling, investing. If you do that and real estate in a way that support each other, one plus one becomes three. And that's what I would look for. I got a question. When I offer to pay for all the paralegal services as a USP to get listings from these families, I've done that, Alina. Now, I have to protect myself. I'll say, I want to deposit, right? If they have letters and they can list the property, I'll list the property and I'll say, we'll pay for it. But if they cancel the listing or the house doesn't sell, I get reimbursed. But absolutely. And if I was a doc preparation person, think about this. A paralegal on a probate might charge $500, $600, maybe $1,000 if they're really good. And less than a million dollar property, they're going to make $25,000 on the listing fee. Which is better? Help me here, you guys. $25,000 or $1,000? Which is better? Right? So, yeah, I would throw in the paralegal fees for free if they list with me. I've done that plenty of times. 
they're glad. And I'll just tell you something else, Alina. I don't know if I pronounced your name right. Alina, Alina. Um, I'll tell you this. The best thing you can do is get them a great paralegal. Because half the paralegals have it in a probate. And they'll take the business and mess it up. But a great probate paralegal is way more valuable 90% of the time to an, than an attorney is going to be. Like I said, 95% of the attorneys haven't done but one a year. And they might know constitutional law, commercial law, DWI law, workers' comp law, and know nothing about probate. So 100% would I consider, not only would I consider paying for it, I've approached paralegals and offered them, I'll pay for it if I get the listing as a way to help them generate more business and have them call me with leads, 100%. Hope that answers your question. Um, I can just go to you and work out a fair co-working split. Main thing is get leads and listings ramp up. 100%, 100%. I would gladly reimburse paralegal fees to get a listing. I would do it all day long. I'd set up a line and have people line down the, the, the street taking that deal. 100% Lena, I would definitely consider uh, paying for par paralegal fees to get the listings. Okay, here's another one, become the administrator. Now, this one's a little tricky, of course, the specialization. But sometimes the, the heirs don't want to be bothered with the paperwork and they can hire an attorney. And oftentimes the attorney will, hire, will, will offer to be the administrator and charge the maximum allowed by law which can be 4% up to uh, declines down, four to three to two, for an amount of our state will be $23,000. But you could be the administrator and act in that capacity for the estate and charge a lot less. And I would tell them, look, the, the attorney's gonna charge you 23,000, I will do it for 5,000. If it lists the property, I'll do it for $1,000. I'll, I'll reimburse you all but $1,000. I would take, take enough money to make sure I covered up with insurance and pay money to cover the paralegal work that goes along with some of that. But there are people, I know people who this is their business. They are administrators in the United States and they list property. And they make more money as administrators than they do as a real estate agent. I'd say particularly if you have a legal background or an accounting background, this is an ideal opportunity for you to distinguish yourself from other real estate agents. Rather than just selling property, now you're helping the state, really running the whole state for them, for their benefit. Okay, so we're going to wrap up. I covered 11 ways to um, make money in addition to just selling houses. And we'll, we'll review them real fast. You can invest as a, as a buy and hold investor. You can flip properties. You can do construction work or market and get more construction work or refer it out to your friend. You can wholesale properties. You can lend to the estate. You can advance money to the estate. You can buy the estate's interest in the, prop in the estate or property. Real estate services like property management, loans, buying other properties, their proceeds, then buying a new house. Legal related services, doc prep, paralegal services. Financial services, consulting with them, what to do with the money, tax advice, tax return filing. Again, the state's going to need a, a tax return file. And if you've done tax prep, this is a great way to build a business that supplements what you do with real estate. And lastly, is becoming the administrator, which is a specialized business. But I know several, this is their main business. They started as realtors and moved into this, and this is what they do on a daily basis. Okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Lisa. Joint tenancy, uh, so there's a question. Joint tenancy has been recently passed away, but their property was not recorded under the living trust. Is the wife okay to sell the property without a copy of the trust? So husband and wife, let me, let me recap the question. Husband and wife own property together as joint tenants. Now, what does joint tenant mean? When one party ha passes, what happens to the property? Goes to the other. Goes to the other. Husband and wife, own property together, husband passes away, who gets the whole property? Wife, with or without a trust. So a wife does not have to go to probate. If she's not, well, nobody does. If you're a joint tenant, it passes. You don't have to change the deed. Probate is only required when you have to change the deed. 
So husband and wife joint tenant, husband passes away, wife has a property uh, on here. I know we've got some good title reps. What you need is a death cert to show the husband passed. And then the, all that's left is the wife and she owns the property. So it doesn't matter if there's a trust or not. Even if there is a trust, the, the property is not deeded in the trust. So it doesn't matter in this case, um, unless you could make the case, so here's an exception. If there was a trust created, and let's say the trust benefited the kids or some charity, those people might say, hey, there's a trust here and the husband who passed away meant to put it in the trust. It's called the Hegstead petition. The wife's gonna say, whoa, 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 it's all mine. And therein lies the battle and that, that would be litigated. So I'm not sure how that would work out. But what I can say is in general, all things equal, husband, wife, joint tenants, one spouse passes, other one's still living. All you need is a death cert and then you close with, with the one surviving spouse. Does that answer the question? I believe so. They replied with thank you. Good. And I'm not an attorney. I'm just telling you the procedures I've used to get deals closed. And I will say to you, I regularly have attorneys who tell me, well, legally, you don't need to do this. What I'll say is, well, that's great. But the title companies are going to insure it unless you follow certain rules. Good. So I just want to kind of offer to you guys, I have a couple other programs if you're interested. Tuesdays at three o'clock, I do real estate investing, zoom.com, remodeling Tuesdays. On Wednesday, we do multifamily out of state. And then I do probate weekly on, on Thursdays at four. You're all welcome to come. If you just text good stuff, just those words, don't put your name in it. Don't say thank you, just good stuff. So 213-460-2577. You'll get a sheet that has all this information on it and other things I work on. And um, there you go, text good stuff. I think that's all the questions for this, unless you have some, oh, what's the best way to hold title when a couple are not legally married and both have kids of their own? Carla, that's a complicated question. <laughs> so uh, I'll give you another scenario is a couple who are legally married, but have kids from prior marriages, right? That's another complicated situation. Uh, so I don't know there's a best way to hold title because the question is, well, what are they trying to accomplish? So what I would recommend is they each should get a trust set up, both the husband and the wife should have their own trust set up. And that way the husband can dictate what happens with his share and the wife can dictate what happens to her share. Or if they're in agreement, they can write a trust. The problem with that is the attorney almost has a conflict because sometimes the husband wants things to benefit his kids, the wife or her kids. So I would say that's a complicated estate planning situation that requires an attorney to work out. But in general, I would say in the, they each should have their own uh, input in that decision. And the way to do that is with a trust. The trust will survive you and direct you where to go. Um, I see another question back to lead gen. Uh, Alina, you can never harp too much on lead generation. I think I made it clear from the very beginning. What's the most effective way to ramp up phone ringing regarding the cost? Do you cover this on your other weekly meetings? Yeah, that's a long, complicated question. How do I get people to ring my phone? I'll tell you what, I started cold calling. I lead generate three hours a day. And nowadays I try to lead generate so that people call me rather than me have to call them. Um, but you know what, on my, if you text good stuff, you can set an appointment with me, maybe go a little more depth about what you're working on. I can make some suggestions on, on how I'll help you uh, personally. But the, the only way to get the phone to ring is to do so much lead generation that people value you and call you and want you to um, call back. I would also would add, that's the power of being an expert in any field. Real estate agents, we, if you go on to any real estate agent's LinkedIn, it's gonna say, I'm an expert in first time buyers, seniors, listings, REOs, short sales, condos, houses, duplexes, triplexes, bridges, commercial, industrial. I'm an expert in all those. Well, that's impossible, isn't it? And we think that if we cast a wide net, people will be impressed, but I'll just say one thing I've learned from my coach, Don Hobbs, is I am an Felicia, can you hear Bill? Okay, so that wasn't just me. No, I can't. I thought maybe it was my internet. Bill, there's a problem. We cannot hear you. No. There she 
Bill, I think you touched something while you were talking. Bill? No, Bill, we can't hear you, Bill. We can hear you. Bill? We cannot hear you. No. Don't you guys love this technology? That's when uh, good jokes uh, can be handy. Any good jokes? Bill, can I hear you? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wait for Bill to try to fix uh, his issue. No. Bless, you. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, uh, Bill, nothing. I'm gonna talk for a few seconds until Bill is back. Uh, I'm gonna talk about besting. Make sure that you understand the besting and the free time. You're back. Testing one, two, three, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. Yes, okay, good. Give our microphone. Um, so one of, the, one of the comments was, uh, marriage is complicated. I was gonna say, I've been married 37 years, one day at a time. I tell men, any day you end up at home in your own bed with your wife is a good day. So I'm not gonna give any marriage advice. I, I can teach you how to, how to survive in marriage, but past that I don't get involved. How do you copy the recording? Uh, that is a question for Felicia, I think. Yes, you go ahead and input your name, email, phone number, and your title rep into the chat. Um, and I think Martha had her hand raised for a minute. Oh, I can't hear you again. Oh, there you go. That's so weird. Can you, you can hear me though, yes? That's so weird, I can't hear you guys anymore now. This is weird. I, I, I don't really know, I have no idea why that would be. Okay. Because we're not talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you'll send over a copy of the recording. Thank you, can't hear, no sound, got a lot of no sounds. Did I answer all the questions? Are we good with all that? I think oh. Martha at one point had her hand raised. I'm not sure. Martha, did you have a question? Yes, my question, because he's mentioning on the lending to the estate, um, what the documents that need to be in place for that, what, um, where, where would you find those? Because obviously you need to secure your money. Right. <clears throat> well, look, when you lend to, there are companies that lend to the estate, like broker through, I've never lent money to an estate directly. I've lent money, I've advanced money to heirs. That's different than lending money, right? Advancing is I'll give you 10,000 and you give me back 15 or whatever the number is. Do you secure that in escrow? So the advances are secured through the probate. Lending, you would directly lean on the property uh, and you have to make sure the executor had the authority to do that. But most lenders won't, there's a, there's a group of lenders that will lend to estates, um, but they're not standard, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac rates. They're hard money type lenders, right. um, but they're cheaper than advanced money. So advanced money usually is 33 to 50% of the principal advanced because might, they might get their money back for a year or two or five years if the litigation goes on. A loan is getting interest monthly, it may not be paid monthly, but it's accumulating interest monthly. So um, you, know, you can do a loan against a property and you can make the, the, um, the borrower, the estate and the um, administrator executor, if they have approved letters are authorized to lend the money. So it'd be no different than near the deed of trust or mortgage, depending on how you lend money that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Could hear how you lead generate. How I lead generate, so I'll tell you that um, pre-COVID, I went to court every day for three hours a day. So I showed up at court. Now I live you know, in West LA, so it was about a half hour drive. I kind of put, enjoy putting on a suit and tie. I would be there at 7.45. I get up early anyhow, have a cup of coffee, and I would, just like realtors might door knock a neighborhood, I door knock the court. I would walk up to people, say hello, looking as handsome as I am, um, and meet people. I would sit in court, listen, look for leads in court, bump into people in the research room. And my goal was to 
meet one and a half people per day, name, address, phone number, and email. So in the course of a week, if I could get eight, that was a victory for me. And I did that for about a year and a half. Uh, today, I don't, can't do that. So today I host two Zoom calls, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. I use a lot of social media, but I had met so many people during that time that I now get enough leads between my Zoom calls and the YouTube channel that to be honest, I get people calling me now with leads. So after you know, a couple of years in this business, that's the goal, I think, of all realtors, is if you lead generate enough and you build a database, you build a tribe of people that know, like, and trust you, that at some point they should be calling you more than you have to call them. So that's what I've worked towards. And if that's a little personal question, I'd be glad to uh, sit down with you individually. If you want to go to zoomwithbillg.com and set an appointment with me, zoomwithbillg.com, or if you text to good stuff to 213-460-2577, there's a link there as well. And I'd be glad to, you know, Set up a one-on-one coaching call. I do one-on-one coaching calls with any realtor or investor uh, who, who asks me to. Free service. Okay, I think we covered all the questions, Felicia. What do you see? Anything I'm missing? Good. Thank you so much, Bill. You know, two, two times I made this call. Both times I had some technical issues, but we worked <laughs> through it today, right? We did great. <laughs> well, thanks for your help. And it was, it was, it was uh, Jorge giving me the, I can't hear me. Uh, without him, I wouldn't have known you guys were hearing me. So, uh, <laughs> The you. beautiful thing about the science bill is uh, you don't hear my accent. <laughs> I'm pretty white. I look white, but if I talk, it's like, Boo. I think I told you, I, w I grew up in the bar of La Habra, so I, I don't hear an accent in your... Guadalajara? No, Guadalajara, bar of La Habra. The fact that you speak English to me makes my life a little easier, so I'm, but I don't hear any accent at all. So. Oh, I have a heavy accent. Guys, thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Javi, you want to tell us something about the termite industry? What's going on? A lot of termites now that is getting hot? Actually, very true. And uh, it seems like there's more inventory coming on the market and they're deciding to do termites. So I'm happy for that. Uh, I have had some people ask me about uh, termites, a presentation, pictures and so forth. Visit our website, downyexterminators.com. All the pictures from the presentation were there before and after. So you can show your clients what we do. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. And I will say now about the vesting. Make sure that you understand the vesting on your property. It's key for you guys to really, really master that one. Um, yesterday, I got a call from somebody who took a listing, and that person didn't know that property was on a trust. So you're not even checking your vesting? That's crazy. That's uh, scary that you, you're not checking that. So make sure you guys check the vesting. If you don't understand, if it's joint tenants, tenants in common, let us know. We can help you. I have a flyer that I put together that it's a pretty simple flyer. This is not your typical flyer from the title company it was so confusing that you start reading and you get more confused now. I put something very, very easy to understand because they're your clients, they're not title red, they're not realtors. They really need to understand vesting. So if you have a concern, if you have a problem, if you want to know more about your vesting, give us a call. We have a bunch of good title reps in this uh, call. And believe me, every title company in the industry, they're good companies. I wish I can tell you Pacific Coast Title is the best company. Now, I would like to you guys. There's a lot of good title reps, a lot of good companies. Make sure that you talk to your title rep. Once again, Bill, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And uh, see you next time. Thanks. Thanks so much. Javi, thank you. Felicia, thank you. Hey, I'm excited. I like that picture that you sent me. What color do you want it? He has a few different things. I'll send you a few. Choosers cannot be beggars. No, beggars cannot be choosers. Sorry. And send me a picture of where you want it exactly so we can color coordinate. Right there. Right there. Yeah. I'm going to put it right here in my office. Right. I think it's dark in there, so it needs to be darker. Doesn't matter. Any color, it's fine. Anything, it's fine. I love it. I'm excited. I'm going to go and buy more bottles. Oh, I don't know if it's going to fit. <laughs> That's fine. We find a place. Don't worry. All right. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Time to go.